Hello, and welcome to the Builder's License Training Institute's lesson on staking for building excavation. At the end of this lesson, you should know who should stake for an excavation, what materials you should have on hand prior to staking, where should you start staking, why you need to stake for an excavation, when to stake for excavation, how to square the corners, and how far from the actual corners should you place your offset stakes. We're going to cover all those items and maybe a couple more. Let's go stake for an excavation. Okay, we're back at the corner of the building where everything's going to take place right here. We're going to square off of this corner. South of me is another corner. These two walls intersect and make this outside corner that we're going to pull off from. This corner is going to become an inside corner. We're going to come off of here about six feet we're going to place a stake. We're going to run 40 feet straight towards you and we're going to place another corner. Now I was going to mention who should stake for the foundation. In this case I'm acting on behalf of the owner. Uh, so the owner or owner's representative typically would stake out the lot. They may hire a surveyor, they may hire an architect. We've got some simple tools. Um, I've got a little garden hatchet, camp hatchet, um, I could use a you know a small two or three pound hammer, um, some survey stakes. In this case, just some small garden stakes are going to work just fine for what we're doing. We have too much material in the way on this wall. We've got an old uh, looks like a phone service box, some, some other stuff, some shrubbery, vegetation, and so on that uh, is going to interrupt a line. So what we're going to do is place a temporary line, a line of reference three feet off of the building foundation, the existing foundation. Let's go ahead and put the first stake in the ground. My stake is three feet off of the building and it's actually three feet right to the edge of the stake. Now whether I use the center of the stake or the edge of the stake, that's, that's irrelevant. As long as it's consistent for my line of reference. The same idea we're going to place this stake again three feet. If you can see that three in there, three feet. We're going to string it from this stake to that stake. It'll go through just to the east about six, eight feet. And we're going to pull off of that and find the, the new and future building corner. Now I'm going to put the string probably as high as I can get it on the stake just to help avoid some of the vegetation we have right in this area. Remember the corner of the new building is going to be exactly six feet off of the foundation of the old building. This is the line that we're going to measure three feet off from. Let's go ahead and measure six feet. I'm trying to use the edge of the stake because I'm going to wrap a string around it and it, uh, it'll come off the edge of the stake nicely. It doesn't have to, but that works quite well. Okay, we're going to wrap the string around our stake we just drove. We're going to go for a walk. We measured out our 40 feet off of the, uh, the new building corner exactly 40 feet and it's right where our stake's laying here on the ground. Okay, we've got a nice straight line, a taut line. We're going to go back to the corner where the two strings cross and we're going to square it up. How do we square it up? <clears throat> we're going to use what they call a 3-4-5 method. Um, and it's the 3-4-5 uh, the proves the Pythagorean theorem. It means that 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. The 3-4-5 method is also called the 6-8-10. You can use numbers uh, in any combination. It could be 3 times 16, which is 48, 4 times 16, which is 64, and 5 times 16, which is 80. Uh, you use the 3-4-5 method to square up building corners, walls. Uh, in this case, it could be a foundation. Um, uh, anytime that you are unable to pull equal opposite diagonals, the 3-4-5 method is ideal, especially for construction purposes. Now, normally, you'd be working with somebody. They could hold the end of your tape. Today, I'm going to use uh, these nice pieces of uh, gardening stakes. 
as my second man. I'm going to pull off of this corner in two different directions. We have a stake in the intersection of the two strings. Uh, remember, this is actually off of our reference line, but we can use the reference line to square what the same we've got a measurement off of. Remember I mentioned also that uh, 3, 4, 5 is the same as 6, 8, 10. We're going to go 6 feet. One thing I uh, started doing a long time ago was carrying a Sharpie with me, or permanent black marker. I'll write on the stakes when I'm done. I can make a tick mark on the string as to holding the temporary mark also. Now I'm going to rob this uh, temporary three foot stake. I'm going to place it right on my mark. We got enough of our first stake. We're going to go eight feet. At eight feet, I'm going to place the stake. Okay, we have the edge of my stake, which represents eight feet. That corner is what I'm going to hook with my tape measure. I'm going to go down to that stake and I'm going to be looking for 10 feet. And that's right where we're at. So the corner of that stake is 10 feet. One thing to keep in mind is there's, there's too many variables when you're staking for excavation to say this is the way you have to do it every time. We're going to use lines as a line of reference, temporary points. Um, it, it, typical situation, you may have a lot full of trees and rubbish and, and things in your way. Um, keep in mind you're staking for an excavation contractor who's going to come with pretty heavy equipment and do quite a bit of disturbance. So the next thing we're going to do is place some offset stakes off of our building corner. We want our offset stakes to be as far away as possible from any potential damage. Remember, this is the stake that I put in that actually represents the corner of the new building. The reason we're going to put offset stakes in is because this stake is going to disappear as soon as they start excavating for the foundation. We have to preserve a method to get back to this point. Let's check to make sure we're 15 feet off of the building corner. We're going to label this stake 15 foot offset, and that is the southeast corner. I mentioned that I'm going to put a four foot offset to the south. Now, I have my building corner, a couple temporary reference stakes that are in line, and then my 40 foot stake that's way down there behind you. I'm actually just going to align these stakes by eye. I could run a string. And for the purpose of excavation, this is certainly adequate to get back to that building corner. And, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're right at four feet. Okay, this is the stake that we put in that's six feet off of the existing building corner. This has been the Builders License Training Institute's lesson on staking for excavation. You know, a simple process for alignment of the corners themselves. I introduced you to the 345 method or 6810 method of squaring up a corner when you're not able to pull opposite and equal diagonals. Now you know why staking for an excavation is temporary and why it's so important to place offset stakes whenever possible. You have to accommodate that excavation contractor and when he's moving the dirt, you don't want those things being disturbed. This has been a simple lesson brought to you by the Builders License Training Institute. Now you know who should stake for an excavation. Be the owner, owner's agent, could be landscape engineer, architect, the builder. You should know what materials to have on hand. You should know where to start staking and why you should stake. In this case, we're staking for the excavation contractor. For all your builder's licensing and continued education needs, please call us at 1-800-727-7104. My name is Roger Peck. On behalf of the Builders License Training Institute, 
Thanks for participating.